A capacitor's two plates are loaded with two different loads as soon as it's connected to a battery. The charge it maintains depends on the capacitance of the capacitor. The electrical field between the two plates stores energy, where it takes labor to load the charge on the plates. When the capacitor is connected to a resistor after it's charged, the voltage will decrease quickly, and as time continues, the voltage will decrease at a lesser extent which you would observe on the globe and a high resistance capacitor would obviously take a lot longer to discharge. The resistance times capacitance would give you the time. An inductor is a coil wound around a magnetic substance. An inductor stores energy in its magnetic field where a capacitor stores energy in its electric field. To indicate what happens to the current in the circuit we can connect a voltmeter over the resistor and the measurement would be equivalent to the current through the circuit. If the inductor wasn't in the circuit the current would have increased quickly to a maximum. A maximum value for the current would be given by the following equation E equals I on R. As current increases the magnetic field in the inductor also increases. This changing magnetic field causes an EMF which resists the change it causes. This is now according to Lenz's law. The result of this is as the current increases, induction decreases until it achieves a maximum value of E equals I on R. The larger the induction, the slower this current builds up. If we send alternating current through the inductor, we'll see that its resisting ability decreases and then that current can readily flow through. But with direct current, its ability to stop current is a lot higher. This is now at low frequencies. If the capacitance symbol C is low, then its ability to block current is also low. Obviously, the opposite is also true. Mixed alternating current signals, which contains mixed signals, can be divided with a mixture of capacitors and inductors. The circuit you are looking at is an example. If the frequency is low, a capacitor will show a high impedance for that frequency and a relative large decrease in the voltage will take place. The large decrease in voltage means that the low frequency over the capacitor can be filtered from the original signal. If there is a high frequency, the inductor will cause a large decrease in voltage and the high frequency can be filtered into the original signal. Frequencies can then be filtered for specific kinds of speakers which are made for different kinds of frequencies. The large speaker is for example for bass sounds at low frequencies while the small one is a tweeter and directly the opposite. The circuit contains a capacitor and loaded inductor. If a current flows through the circuit the capacitor will immediately discharge. Current will then be sent through the inductor. The inductor delivers an opposing EMF and this causes a delay. If the inductor is completely discharged, it will leave a magnetic field inside the inductor. With no energy to keep the magnetic field going, the magnetic field will also fall in after a while. This will induce an EMF which will make the current flow through the circuit and will load the capacitor in the opposite way. This process is repeated constantly. If an inducting capacitor was ideal, no energy would have been lost and the process will repeat continuously. This loss is due to Ohmian resistance. If a small signal is quickly applied to a vibrating circuit, the current will increase a lot. If this happens, we say the circuit is in resonance. If the capacitance of the capacitor or inductance of the inductor changes, the resonating frequency of the circuit changes. A radio uses this principle of resonance to tune in a radio station. Each radio station gets a license to only broadcast in a specific geographical area. Your radio will simultaneously receive these signals through the antenna. The loads or electrons in your aerial will vibrate frequently due to being influenced by signals in the area. 
the mixture is taken to a two spill inductor which is called a mutual inductor a changing capacitor is connected to the circuit connected to the inductor and the capacitor is changed to its original frequency of the vibration on the AM or FM frequency which you are listening to which is delivered at some kind of kilohertz the small electric current of the LC circuit causes resonance this is when it's tuned correctly a resistor in the circuit would allow a voltage to make a further adjustment down the line this is called detection and strengthening in the following example we put a signal generator lamp conductor and capacitor all in series the signal generator is tuned to deliver a fixed voltage deliverance with a fixed frequency its value is then increased from a low value to a high value the bulb will then burn brighter as the frequency increases as the frequency keeps increasing the inductor will start to withstand some of the current and then the bulb will start to dim the capacitor will deliver at a low frequency opposing current which then becomes less and less as the frequency increases a diode is an electrical appliance which only allows current to flow in one direction through a circuit this is made by two impure semiconductors a semiconductor is a substance which doesn't conduct electricity very effectively examples of this is germanium and silicon the ability of these substances to conduct electricity is influenced by impurities these substances have a large amount of current carriers in a crystal structure by adding impurities like germanium causes holes in the semiconductors crystal structure let's say they should have a valence of 3 and by adding substances like arsen which has a valence of 5 brings in electrons in the crystal structure if it has a valence of 5 it's called an n-type semiconductor with a positive charge it's called a p-type if a small piece of the N and P type are combined, we get a PN diode. Current will then only flow in one direction through this type of substance. The two pieces then form an efficient rectifier. To get the valence of a substance on the periodic table, we look at the group. Group 4 would, for example, have a valence of 4. A rectifier is the name given to a substance which only allows current to flow in one direction. If a voltage is applied over the PN diode and the P can be made positive and the N can be made negative, a large current can flow through. When this happens, we say that the current is forward biased. And if the voltage direction is changed, we say it's in backward bias. If it's backward biased, then there's a large resistance. Not a lot or a little current will flow through the diode. Current therefore flows from the P side to the N side in one direction. The graph shows how the current differs through the diode as a voltage is applied to it. Note that if the voltage is on a turning point, the current will start increasing faster. Applications of the PN diode is in the memory disks of computers and also transistors. A light emission diode or LED is, is a diode which omits light when it's forward biased and conducts electricity. The light omitted is because of a direct combination of materials in the P diode with gaps in the N diode's crystal structure. The omitted light has a certain frequency. It can be red, green or blue. This process is known as electroluminance. When an LED is on, there is normally a voltage of 2 volts on it and the current is approximately 10 milliamp. The brightness depends on the flowing current. To a higher current like 50 milliamps will cause the LED to burn out. It's then important to protect the LED by putting a resistor in to restrict the current which must be placed in series. Let's say we have to calculate in the following example what resistor is needed to restrict the current of 10 milliamp if the battery is 6 volt. The volts in the resistor we get as 6 minus 2 volts which is 4 volts. We then take the 4 volt divide by 10 milliamp. This then gives us 400. A FET resistor is a special type resistor where the flow of current is controlled through a semiconductor. This is done by applying a voltage over a gate. 
The voltage applied forms an electrical field inside the FET. The electrical field can decrease the tempo of the electrical current flowing through the circuit. It's almost like clamping a rubber hose if the water is flowing. The channel can be an N or P type semiconductor. The electrons in a field effect transistor moves from the source to the abductor in the semiconductor where there is a shortage of current carriers. This is then a depletion zone which acts as a gate which is on both sides of the conduction channel. If the FET is in versus voltage, the magnetic field moves into the conductor and cuts off the current completely. If the current on the other hand is forward biased, then the gates are open and the current is restricted to a minimum. There are different types of FETs, for example MOSFET, and the MOS stands for metal oxide silicone. This type has a very high input impedance of approximately 10 to the power 8 ohm. It therefore takes almost no current from the circuit it's working from, and we can apply it to electronic equipment such as calculators, armwatches and very sensitive musical equipment. That's why you never almost have to worry to change the battery of your calculator. FETs are very effective amplifiers. Because of this they are used to control very high currents. They can use a relatively small gate voltage to control a very large current. They are also very good switches and are usually used in computers because of their ability to quickly turn on and off. The circuit shows how a FET can be used as an amplifier by using a potential divider to provide the gate source voltage. Operational amplifier contains about 20 transistors, a capacitor and various resistors, all of them on a single piece of silicone, which is known as a chip. Its purpose is to amplify voltage. The output voltage is always equal to the input voltage times a constant. A lot of operational amplifiers require a two-plane power source. It basically just means that it has two batteries. One supplies a positive voltage plus 9 volt and the other one a negative voltage of minus 9 volt. In the figure we see the symbolic connections to operational amplifier as well as the pin connections. The 741 has two 9 volt batteries. It has two inputs. The one is called the turnaround input which is minus and the other one is called the non-turnaround which is positive. This is the one input. The output of the turnaround input is 180 degrees outside the phase with the input as illustrated in the diagram. In the circuit diagrams using operational amplifiers we usually don't show the power source. The operational amplifier works in a very simple way. If the non-turnaround input plus V is larger than the turnaround input minus V, the delivery voltage is then 9 volts. If the minus V is larger than the plus V then the output is negative. As an application look at the following figure. It is designed to test flashlight batteries. If the battery becomes weak the voltage decreases below 1.4 volts. A voltage divider, two resistors in series is used to tune the input voltage to 1.4 volts. The output is connected to a 1 kilo ohm resistor in series. The voltage of the operational amplifier at the minus V should be 1.4 volts. The battery's feedback to the battery is plus 9 volts. If R2 is decided to be on 1 kilo ohm, then R1 should be 5,4 kilo ohm. The battery tested is connected to the forward based input or non turnaround. If the value of this is more than 1.4 volts, the LED will shine. If it is less than this, the LED won't burn and the battery will then need to be replaced. An inverting amplifier can be used as an amplifier with a very large current amplification. The circuit shown here shows a basic configuration of an inverting voltage amplifier. You will see that the plus input is earthed. To make the current stable, an inverting resistance is used RF to connect the output which is negative to the input. The feedback of O through RF tends to cancel out the input signal at point S. Because the amplifier has a very large input impedance, no real current from S therefore flows into the amplifier. 
That means that the current through input resistor Ri is equal to the current through Rf. From the previous information we get the following formula which can determine the strength of the amplifier through by using the relationship between the output and input resistance. The minus means that the phase of the input voltage is changed. Operational amplifiers are connected as shown in the figure. What will be the amplification of the circuit? Well, we see in the figure that the amplifier is connected to the inverting amplifier. The input and delivery currents are the same. And the amplification is given by the formula of the input and feedback resistors. We get the voltage amplification by taking minus RF on RI. That gives minus 100 kilo ohm divided by 2 kilo ohm equaling minus 50. That means the input voltage is multiplied by 50 and that it's of the opposite phase. To amplify musical signals that alternate like alternating current, the signal is fed via capacitor to the input and it's also fed through the output via a capacitor. The non-inverting input signal is connected to the earth via a resistor with a value of that of Ri and Rf. To restrict the effect of the current between the two points to a minimum, this resistor doesn't influence the amplification. Let's say we want to make an output amplifier of which the output amplification is not inverted. The circuit in front of you shows the circuit for a non-inverting operational amplifier. The operational amplifier with negative feedback is used in front, but the resistors R I and R F are connected as voltage sharers between the output and the earth. R F, as previously, is connected to the non-inverting input, but the inverting input is connected through R I to the earth. Note that the two resistors form a potential divider between the output and the earth. The signal that is strengthened is connected through the non-inverting input. A positive signal at the non-inverting input will make the output positive. The current through the two resistors R I and R F go to the earth and give indication to a positive voltage at S. The potential of the inverting input is driven by the potential of the non-inverting input and this makes the output less positive. The feedback decreases the voltage to a great extent because of the high input impedance of any input to the operational amplifier there wouldn't be any real current after the operational amplifier. We then see that IF is equal to I in which is equal to VS on R1 which is equal to V in on R i. We see in the diagram that the delivering voltage V out is equal to V s plus I f R f which is equal to I f times R i plus R f. If we then supplement V in on R i in place of I f we find that the amplification is equal to R i plus R f on R i is this equal to 1 plus RF on RI. These amplifiers can be used in the amplifiers of calculators because they can add up, subtract, divide and multiply.